This is the stock lock trigger. I never want to see that again. Like, yeah, they, they worked some magic in this thing. It, it feels like, it feels almost like a mechanical keyboard. I don't know how to explain it. It just feels really good. It's very satisfying. Hello, YouTube. Unremarkable Airsoft here. This is a review I've been wanting to do for a long time. So, um, this here is my very first real firearm. I bought this thing and um, like most Glock owners, um, they take their first shot with a, with a Glock and <laughs> any of them who have tried any other kind of handgun or have at least felt the triggers of other handguns know that the Glock trigger sucks. Naturally, that leads to the, the question of, well, what kind of aftermarket trigger should I go for? And this will lead you into a rabbit hole of people all over the internet saying that this trigger is amazing, that trigger is amazing. Don't even touch the trigger because your life is going to depend on it someday. And if you mess with any of the internals, you're fucking with, you know, your life, essentially. If you change the trigger, you're potentially introducing a point of failure or an increase in tolerance that wasn't there before. Because Glocks out of the box, they're very safe handguns. They're drop safe. They have multiple points of uh, safeties within the gun. Um, and they're remarkably safe firearms and that's why they're used in so many duty positions. To add in an aftermarket part, you have to think very carefully about it. And obviously some people aren't gonna put that same consideration in and they're just gonna, you know, plaster their their brand new their brand new Glock and all kinds of red anodized parts and you know whatever whatever makes them happy and you'll see a number of aftermarket parts on here um, but I think the centerpiece of this entire this entire Glock 20 build is the trigger now this is the Johnny Glock's combat trigger and they make them for pretty much every single Glock under the sun because this is the 10 millimeter variety, there's not a huge amount of aftermarket for it. it. It's hard to find parts in general. And even if a part is compatible, a lot of the times the websites won't even list the fact that it's compatible because no one even has a Glock 20 to test it out on. Um, for example, uh, this here, the Cagwork slide release, nowhere on the website does it say that it is compatible with the Glock 20. It is, but I had to, I had to go out on a limb and, you know, risk buying something, risk wasting money on something that, you know, might not end up working, um, just to be pleasantly surprised that it did work. Um, Johnny Glocks, they know Glocks inside out and they have a dedicated trigger for the Glock 20, or at least a compatible one. And, you know, they're upfront about it, which gave me some peace of mind. It's nice to know that you're gonna buy something and it's gonna be a drop and fit. Now, speaking of drop and fit, the installation process is super easy. You just do the standard disassembly and you punch out this pin and you punch out these two pins. You pull out the old trigger and you put in the new one. Easy as that. For this review, I'm taking the trigger out just so I can give you guys a better look. So, um, because this trigger is about 3000 rounds deep into its life cycle, um, it doesn't quite look as good as it did when I first got it. And by that I mean, when you get this from, from Johnny Glock himself, um, it is polished to a mirror finish. And it is in some places where it's kind of like not high, high wear and um, it's not touched by carbon, you can still see there's a high polish finish on it. And I had to clean it and re-lubricate it just because you know, Glocks get dirty. Um, it's worth a clean. It's worth cleaning them every once in a while. So, when it came from the factory, it had a nice little coat of grease right here to kind of like smoothen the engagement surfaces. Um, I recently bought an ultrasonic cleaner, so um, a week or two ago, I did a full clean of this thing, and it gave it it's, it gave it back its mirror polish. And then I had to reapply little bits of oil in certain places. The engagement surfaces are very smooth and it pretty much removes all the grit and the mush that the kind of stock Glock trigger is known for. And just to kind of do a little demonstration of that, 
Here we have the original Glock trigger, just as a baseline. So here we have the stock trigger. All right, let's look at this take up. Look at all that take up. There's a huge amount of take up. We hit a wall, a lot of force right here, and then a break. Okay, so do it one more time. A huge amount of take up. Wall, and then break. The wall is pretty stiff. Unfortunately, I don't have a gauge to kind of measure the weight. There's not a whole lot of resistance. It's not too ooh, gritty. It is very mushy, but it's not super gritty. And this is a this is actually a pretty well broken in Glock trigger. Um, I've done a ton of dry firing with this, and it's also gone. It's gone through its paces. I think I've put about five hundred to thousand rounds through it. One thing I'll note about the wall on this trigger is that the wall is like it is a hard wall. Like it stops, and you need to put a lot of force just to get it to break. Okay, so now let's put back in the Johnny Glock's trigger, which is the, the kind of main, main event. Okay. So now, let's do a little demonstration of the Johnny Glock's trigger for the comparison. So, let's have a look. Right off the bat, there is almost no pre-travel. The pre-travel is minimal. And then, you reach a wall. And this wall is not quite as stiff as the stock one, and that's a good thing. Um, with the stock trigger, when you're really kind of squeezing on that, tr squeezing the trigger, trying to get past that wall, um, it tends to kind of like, you know, make you twist your grip a little bit. And the wall is not so hard, but also it kind of has like slightly more, more travel before it breaks. and then the brake. And at once it breaks, it stops right there. Um, you can adjust the, the over travel with the, a little screw in it. At first, I didn't care so much and I actually thought maybe it would be a, a potential point of failure. So I just took out the over travel adjustment screw altogether and said, I, I don't care about over travel. Um, but later on, out of curiosity, I decided to put it back in and, you know, tighten it ever so, so slightly to kind of minimize the over travel. And I'm actually pretty satisfied with the results. Um, but yeah, let's, let's do another, another little test of that. Oh my god, yeah. It feels almost like, like, I mean, there's some resistance, but it feels almost like you're pushing a button. Like, picture like big like tactile red button and like when you're pushing it down that's what it feels like it feels almost like you're pushing like a mechanical a mechanical switch almost like a keyboard it's hard to explain like it has to be very quiet when you pull the trigger you can hear the spring tensioning it's like because it's so highly polished on the inside there's zero grit there's zero mush it's just you feel the spring in the striker tensioning. And then you hit the wall. I don't wanna say it's a rolling break, but it feels a lot more rolling than the break on the stock one. I don't wanna misuse terminologies, but instead of like a really solid wall that you have to overcome, it's kinda of like, it's kinda of like a range. You hit the wall and then it doesn't quite break after you push it. It breaks after maybe like an eighth of an inch of movement. There, see? So where you actually hit the wall and where it actually breaks is not the same. There. It, it's, it just feels a lot better. It's hard to go back to the original one. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Wall and then break. So a bit about the build quality. Um, the build quality, I, I'd say exactly on par in terms of durability as the stock one, probably better. Um, the trigger is made of metal, 
and my friend complained that on a hot day the trigger would get really warm. Uh, that's something to consider. Um, I ain't a bitch, so it didn't really bother me, but the metal trigger feels really nice. It's very, very sturdy. Um, and the way the safety goes flush against the trigger feels uh, like night and day difference. Um, it feels so much better than the stock one because the stock one protrudes out after you've depressed it as far as it goes. And I actually, I don't recommend you do this, but I filed down the safety because when you depress it all the way, it like digs into your finger. And I'm sure other people do this too. I think some people just straight up take out this safety because they don't find it useful. But yeah, um, in terms of comfort, night and day. This is like a flat face trigger. So yeah, it feels really good. Um, and it comes with, a, it brings you the benefits of a flat face trigger and the safety is much more ergonomic than the, the stock one. And w as with the internals of the trigger mechanism, uh, they're high polished and they're built to the same exact, you know, standards as the stock one, if not better. Another thing to discuss about this product, I think is the customer service. And I have two anecdotes about it. So for starters, um, when I first bought the trigger, um, I got an unexpected email from, uh, from the seller, John, you know, Mr. Johnny Glock himself. Um, and the email was that my order was going to be a bit late. And the email was like, had an apologetic tone, like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't ship out your order today. Like, you know, my, my friend's house is underwater. And this was, uh, during the, the hurricane of Florida. Um, and I was like, I straight up sent an email, like, oh my God, you know, that's horrible. Um, you know, I, I, I wish you, I wish you health and safety, you know, don't, don't even worry about my order. Cause like, you know, it seems like you have like much bigger, you know, issues to deal with, you know, in, in like real life. Um, he sent it the next day. So I have nothing bad to say about them as, as like customer service wise, like, uh, Johnny Glocks, like the people who work there, they're on a completely different grind set that I, I physically have no idea how they, they maintain. Um, they were literally in the middle of a hurricane and they shipped out my order like nothing was happening. If there's like a, a small business that is doing great work and they still manage to, you know, have customer service that amazing, it should definitely be, you know, it should definitely be shouted out. Some problems that I faced with the Johnny Box trigger. This comes back to the question of, you know, if this is if this is like a carry a carry gun, if this is some kind of duty gun or like an EDC, will you be able to trust your life to this trigger? And while I will say it's a much better trigger than the stock one, I did have some problems with it. Maybe because of the time there was some QC issues, but after the first thousand rounds of shooting through this, the trigger safety came loose. So in the stock lock trigger, there are these kind of pins that I guess are like molded in or maybe like heat fused into the polymer. So there's the trigger, there's the little safety, safety thing, and it looks like they almost laminated the roll pin that keeps this in place into the trigger. On the Johnny Glock's trigger, on the other hand, um, that is a screw. It's like a set screw that holds the safety in place. Now, I'm sure by default, they, they Loctite whatever needs to be Loctited, or they leave Unloctited any screws that you're meant to adjust. But I didn't think that far ahead, like, oh, maybe I should Loctite these. I just went out and started shooting. Um, it was like a 110 degree day. I shot probably over a thousand rounds through this thing. And 
maybe it was loctited, but maybe a combination of the heat and just the amount of like shooting I did that day, it caused this little pin here to walk out without me realizing. Luckily, um, because of the way this this um, kind of drop safety sits inside the trigger, it didn't go anywhere. But the actual pin itself, um, it's somewhere in the middle of the desert in a SoCal. So I am never gonna see that again. Fortunately, I was able to email Johnny Glocks and they sent me out um, a replacement kind of screw roll pin thing. Um, the next day, like they were, they were on it. If you want to talk about great customer service, they have fantastic customer service. Um, I, I wasn't, I didn't tell them I was going to do a review of it or anything. I just said like, yo, um, this roll pin walked out on me. Like I don't have a safety anymore. And to be fair, um, it shot just fine without the safety. The, uh, the safety is a redundancy and obviously like the Glock has a weird safety. I think it's meant to be drop a drop safety so that if it kind of hits something, it doesn't pull the trigger just by momentum. Like you have to physically push the trigger in yourself. But a lot of people think the safety is stupid anyways because um, it it's like, it's a safety that only lets you pull the trigger when you pull the trigger. So technically even without it, it shot just fine. But Obviously, I want I want a gun that's as safe as possible, so I wanted that replaced immediately, and they delivered. Um, I got the new safety, and this time, I didn't just Loctite it, I red loctite it. So, if you buy a Johnny Glock's trigger, there are certain screws that you do not want to go anywhere. This is one of them. This one and that one. After that happened, I was like a little... Kind of apprehensive about just leaving leaving screws unloctited so i red loctited both of these screws just to be sure um and since then i've had no issues whatsoever um i think because of the way the safety kind of rotates in the housing of the trigger it twists it it twists the the screw or roll pin counterclockwise so it's literally doing like, it's giving it like a lefty loosey turn every time you push this in. So this screw, you want it secured. And I don't know if Johnny Glock's um, Loctite's it out of the factory or out of the, the shop, but maybe, you know, double check the Loctite on these screws here because that, you don't want it to walk out. You don't want to, you don't want a gun that's less safe. Um, will it shoot? 110%, but that that thing right there because of this kind of like lefty loosey turn that happens when you push this push the safety um you either want to you know ask johnny box to double check the loctite there or you know if you don't trust anyone but yourself um loctite it yourself and i read loctited that that mf so hopefully that thing doesn't move anywhere but ever since then um I put probably another 2,000 rounds through it and 110% reliable. Um, so going back to, you know, whether, whether or not, would you trust your life with this trigger? And I've never been in any, any mortal danger where I needed to, you know, rely on a gun for, you know, home defense or self-defense or anything. But from my personal experience and maybe you are someone who has to do that. So, you know, you're gonna have to decide for yourself whether or not you're willing to take a risk putting an aftermarket part in your gun. And even with the issues that I did have, which is it, just pure physics, like this thing turns, it turns the screw, it, it fell out. Um, it was a hot day, it might've loosened up the, the bond of the glue. But from my experience, I've put 3,000 rounds through this thing and every single time it went bang. They make a fine trigger and I I would recommend it with, with the one caveat, Loctite those screws.